Okay, so it's just after two o'clock, so we'll get started. I'm David Kitchen. I work with Commerce Guys in our London office, which we opened in November last year. We have, uh, you know, we have our main office in Paris, and we have an office in Ann Arbor in the US as well. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is subscriptions and how you can do those with Drupal Commerce. We recently were working. Um, on a site in the UK for a publisher who wanted to add, a, they have a paywall on their site, and we've developed a set of modules that, we've all, that have all been released back to the community on um, doing subscriptions and how you can build those and use them uh, in your sites. And it's a very common area of, of requirement is uh, the subscriptions uh, type of model for commerce. Just to get some uh, knowledge and idea of what experience uh, the reason the room is anyone actually built a site using Drupal Commerce for a commerce site in here? That's, that's a few. Um, so um, there's a few complicated things that I'll have to I'll, I'll cover over when we um, gonna do. So I'm going to do um, probably going to be about uh, ten minutes just introducing the modules and what they do and what the parts of them are, and then half an hour to do a walkthrough of how they all get set up and how they use to actually make that um, subscription and recurring part working. And uh, then we've got time and the questions afterwards, but any time you've got one, ask a question as well. So what I'm going to talk about in this sort of scenario is the very common type of subscription that you'll see and have probably signed up to as well, where you get a monthly subscription and you sign up for free to start with for a month, and then you start getting charged X amount every month after that. And in this case, I'm going to show it setting up a role. And this is pretty similar to what we did on the publishing site. So they have a role that then gets access to specific articles on the website. So there's a range of modules that we're going to use to do that. And these are the, the key modules. Uh, these all have dependencies as well. So commerce recurring is the main one. This is the module that actually provides the recurring. Card and file, which is um, to use for um, credit cards. The payment gateway module that you're going to use. Um, Dunning management module, role expire. Um, you can use the role field and role watchdog. So I'm just going to go into detail of what all of these modules do. So the main one is the recurring framework. This is an API module doesn't um, do a lot on itself, but it's designed to be used and combined with these other modules. But we wanted to make it independent, so it doesn't have any um, details about payment methods. It just deals with the um, actual recurring thing, whatever it is that's recurring. And it comes with a recurring product type. This is a new product type. So the standard product is just a thing with a price. But what this adds is an initial <coughs> price period, so that can be a free month, or maybe the initial price is more expensive. So sometimes you have a sign-up fee where you have to pay a, a fee for configuration at the start, and then an initial period. And then once you've got that, you've got your recurring price and recurring period. So this is the thing that's going to continue. So every month it's this much, or every week it's this much, or every year it's this much. And we can also have an, an end period. So that is how long this subscription lasts for. So you may want to have a sign up for a subscription that only lasts for one year and then ends. So this could be something like a, um, a magazine subscription is often done like this to actually something's being posted out to you. You sign up for one year, you pay monthly and it ends. Or maybe it's something you could actually use this module for um, higher purchase type scenarios where someone is buying something, they get it, and then they pay monthly and they pay it off over a year or two years to actually make that uh, purchase. The next thing that we have is a recurring entity and this is the thing where all the processing happens. So we're creating a new type of entity and this collects together the information about the product that's being recurred the initial order that was used to create the recurring entity, and then it stores all the subsequent orders that are made from the recurring. It can be used for management for both the store and the customer. 
so the customer can see their recurring things, their recurring entities, and you can provide the management that they need there, so cancellation or editing. Maybe they need to change the car that's going to be charged for it, or change the address if they're moving. So those sort of details can be added on there. So the example of that is for an address. It's a fieldable entity. You can include the address from the order on there. And we found that we that, that was one of those requirements because there have been three previous attempts at doing recurring <coughs> in commerce, and they all have limitations on them, and one of those was to do with address management. We also wanted to make it flexible, so you can actually recur an order rather than just a product. And um, because we've had some inquiries about people who want to provide things like um, vegetable boxes. So this is the sort of thing where you subscribe to... Um, receive a weekly delivery of um, fruit and veg that you order. You say, I want to receive this range um, of things every week uh, that might be for a local market. So we wanted to be able to make it a flexible framework for that as well. Then there's a lot of default rules that come with these modules. And for the recurring, uh, we've got a set of default rules that create the recurring entity when the order is paid in full. But these we decided to create, they're all created in rules. Rules is a very heavily used thing in commerce. And you can go in and edit these rules. So maybe rather than it being on the time when the order is paid in full, you want um, a review process. So you can just go in and change that rule and say, don't recur, don't create the recurring until the um, order has been marked a particular status by the store administrator um, or any, any other changes. Maybe you place conditions. Don't recreate the recurring entity um, unless something else, or some other conditions are correct. And then there's another rule that uses a cron process to load up on a regular basis all the recurring entities that are due to be renewed to create new orders. And it, can do, it does this in a batch process. So this will create new orders and place them in a pending state, waiting for whatever is going to happen to them next. So the next module is the card and file module. And um, for those that have done, as I did ask about Drupal Commerce, has anyone else done a, uh, a website where there's been uh, commerce transactions, money transactions, where there's card details, or payment processing on there. Hands up. It's a, a few on there, but not many. So those that have, ha have will have come across something called PCI compliance, which is all to do with how you process credit cards, how you deal with their details, and um, how you process them. So we've got lots of payment gateways that integrate with Drupal Commerce, and they all provide different options of how they integrate so some you get redirected away into as a page, some embed an iframe in Drupal Commerce, some it's a redirected form, and some it's actually in the page. And the level and type of integration that you want to use will often depend on what your PCI requirements are, what level of um, self-certification or certification is needed for that store. And that's to do with how the volume of transactions one of the things that you definitely can't do is store card details. So that's things like the cre actual credit card numbers, the three digits on the back of the card, the expiry date, the name on the card. But most payment gateways provide a service to do that. So when you do your first transaction with the payment gateway, they provide you with a unique token um, so either a UUID type structure or it's some other tokenized value that represents that card. And only, only you can use that with your merchant account to take future payments on that card. And what card and file module does is provide that API. And um, we've got around um, eight modules, uh, payment gateways that are now compatible with the uh, version 2 of the card and file, which again uses an entity to store the card and file. So that's then fully exposed if you use an 
rules so it can be accessed. You can provide all the user interfaces for both the customer and the merchant, the store, to see all the details about the cards that are stored. It also has a sub-module in the card file module that provides a set of default rules for working with the recurring module. So I mentioned that the recurring module creates the order, the new order, and puts it in a pending state. Card and file has a set of uh, a default rule that then loads all the orders that are in that pending state, and it then tries to charge the card. And um, at the moment, we have a default card for a user, so that's the one that it tries to charge. But you could alter those rules. As I said, you could have an um, entity reference on the recurring entity to allow the user to pick which card, if they've got multiple cards saved, is going to be used for that recurring. Um, we've also had a lot of discussions about how we provide things like fallback onto different cards. And this comes into the next module that I'm going to mention, which is Dunning, which is Dunning management. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of this. I hadn't heard of the term itself before we started to work on the actual module, figuring out what to call it. But this module is what happens if the card is declined. So you've got a subscription that's, access, that's giving access to, you, to your website. What happens when the card is declined? And you've got several, you've got two different types of main declines. What's called a soft decline or a hard decline. So you get a decline where there's insufficient funds on the card. And this module provides some default rules to be able to go through that process. If it's a soft decline like that, it can queue up more attempts to try and charge the card and set some messages to send to the user. So you get your first message, your card failed. Um, we're going to try it again in two days' time. And I'm sure if you've ever subscribed anything, um, <clears throat> this normally happens um, also when your card expires. So you know your card is expired, or maybe you've lost your card and you've had to cancel it. And you've got that thing that you're subscribed to, and you get the email that says, we can't charge your card anymore, please go and update it. So this module provides all of that functionality to help get all of that set up. Um, it doesn't include, but um, we're also looking at including that on card and file, is that pre preemptive messaging that, because uh, we do store the expiry date of the card in the card and file. So you can do that preemptive. Your card is going to expire next month. Don't forget to update your details before it's time to renew. Um, we have two different profiles for Commerce Kickstart, which is our um, install profile for Drupal Commerce. When we first released Drupal Commerce, we found that, um, like Drupal, it's a very complicated thing <coughs> to set up and get installed. So we've got um, two install profiles, one called Kick Kickstart 1 and Kickstart 2. They're, um, both run on Drupal 7 with Drupal Commerce 1. Kickstart 2 sets up a much more complex example store ready to go for selling physical products. But I'm using Kickstart 1 because <coughs> it's, it's a more simple, it doesn't include uh, a lot of the features for stock uh, and uh, physical product management. Just so I can um, more easily demonstrate uh, the features. So I've already installed all of those modules that I mentioned on this site and all of their dependencies as well. And the first thing that we get is the new product type, which is a recurring product. So I'm going to add a new product. So as I said, we've got our initial price and the recurring price. Um, so in this case, uh, we're going to have an initial price of zero and a recurring price of 4.99. This price field here is the normal price field for that appears in every commerce product. 
You can use it for advertising purposes and the standard price. So when you're laying out your product or including it in search and so on, you've got the normal price for what the um, base price of the product is. So I just uh, include the standard monthly price. And for example, our initial period is going to be a month, and then we have a, um, sorry, our initial period is one month, and then we have a recurring period of every month after that. And in this case, we're not going to have an end period. So that's quite quick and easy to add. And <coughs> this is the first complex um, bit of Drupal Commerce, is that the product is an entity of its own. It's not viewable on its own by a customer. So the next bit I need to do is create a product display, which is a node, uh, that we can include that uh, product on. So we just have a product reference field here, and uh, you can have multiple products associated with a node. This allows you to create variations. So maybe here, we could have created two products, one that was the monthly subscription, and then an annual subscription option. Um, this is quite a common thing where, so pay for the full year and you get it cheaper, and the customer could pick between the two options on the same page. So now I've got my subscription product. Uh, as I say, the pricing system replaces the initial price, uh, the, the price with the initial price. So as you can see here, it's just showing us zero. So you have to think about um, just how you, you show it, and that's all about display, and how you configure the fields. So I can add that to the cart. what it's showing here is our product in the car and if I go to checkout I think I'll get it here um, so I'll just fill in some details here so I need to So I'm going to use a um, payment gateway that we already have set up, which is um, run by American Express. <coughs> First rule of... Um, Presentations is don't need live ones, so I just need to enable our. I set the details up to enable it. And So this is a um, redirected form payment gateway. So we have our details here that we need to um, enter the card details. And I've got um, the sample details for testing uh, American Express payment gateway. Um, what we've, um, I've forgotten to take, there's an option to require 
the Carden file to be saved, um, which I haven't switched on. I'll show you that now as we go through this process. Um, I'll show you that now. So we have three options in Cardon File to um, show a checkbox letting people, customers check in, uh, opt in, opt out, or do not show and always store the Cardon File. So if you're building a subscription site, you're always going to want to um, store the Cardon File uh, so you can charge it in the future. I just need to make a change for our um, test payment gateway. So you can see actually now I've switched that on, you no longer get the option to say, do you want to save this card or not? I should have tested this uh, payment gateway before I did the demo. So what's now happened is now we've completed the order. Um, I can go into the store and see the recurring entities. And uh, here we've got our recurring entity that's been created for, uh, this is the type of product recurring entity. So you can have an order recurring entity as well. And it's due in four weeks and one day. And uh, it is active and there's no end date. Uh, so as an admin, you can go in and look at the uh, recurring entity. Uh, you can see it's referencing subscription 4. And what it has is um, uh, uh, the order reference field as well. And this has the orders that are being tracked against it. And the first order in the reference field is going to be the initial order. And if you were coming in as an admin, you can actually change uh, dates on here um, or uh, disable the subscription. I can also see that in my account as a user I can see my subscription and in this case we just have a simple uh, view to show you when it's next due and then you can just view the orders that are associated with that subscription. And these are just default views that you can go and edit and change as much as you want for your specific requirements.
So what I wanted to go in and show you is the actual rules. So I just ask about the comma source. Has anyone made lots of rules for their site or used rules much? There's quite a few more people that have used rules. So rules is the basis of events, conditions, action. And the first one that I talked about was um, actually the first one that I mentioned was the override of pricing. So we have a rule that deals with pricing and says when I need to calculate the price of this product, change the price with the initial price for um, the first one. But here's the, here's the one I wanted to look at, which is create recurring entity when the order is completed. So the actual event that we're using here is when an order is first paid in full. So it's usually the best event to take something like this on. Also things like if you're selling um, digital products, like digital downloads or something, the, um, uh, when the order is first paid in full is quite a good status um, because you know that the, the, the payment is all in place. So what we do is um, get all the line items on the order rec containing recurring products. So that means you could have multiple subscriptions running on a website, or you can have a mixture of subscription products and non-subscriptions, so physical products or downloads, and it's only going to look at those products on the order that are actual, have are the recurring type. And then it's going to loop through those and create a recurring entity for every one. So if someone orders two different subscription things on the same order, they're not linked together going forward. So they are two separate subscriptions that can be dealt with differently. And then it's, um, so then we get the crate and um, it's going to take the details from the order, the line item, and create those details. And um, it checks what fields there are on the recurring entity to take them in there. So I said about the address field. So maybe we want to add an address field onto the recurring entity. Once you've done that, you can then start putting that in this rule. So you can say, when the recurring entity is created, create a address reference field, address field on there with the same details as the original order. And then the customer, you can provide the option to go and update those address details at a later time. So then the next one I mentioned is that we generate the recurring orders on the cron run. So what this one is doing is every time cron is executed, you can see it's going to load five. It's going to find five subscription recurring entities that are due. So they have a, a record on them of when they're next due. And it's going to um, create them in batches, so batches of five. So this all depends on how you want to run it. So you can change this to say, actually, I want to run this um, once a day, overnight, load them all and do them in one go. Or, as it's set up, it does them five every time cron runs. So maybe if you've got cron running every hour, it's going to do five, or maybe 15 minutes, it's going to do, do them. So it's a question of looking at the volumes and how rapidly you want things to happen on your site. Um, there's another module here, so you can see that this one just does a loop. Um, so this is why we restrict it to five. It's just, in rules, a loop is just a for loop, so there's restrictions there if you're dealing with large numbers. Um, there's another module that I, I've actually worked on that's called Batch Loop that uses the, the Drupal Batch API to handle the loop in the rule. And that means it's going to um, push them off to the Batch API and can handle bigger numbers to uh, loop through. So the next one that I mentioned, so these are coming from the card and file recurring module that brings in the option to charge the pending recurring orders. 
and uh, again, we set this up to do five. So it'll find five orders that are in the state recurring order pending every cron run, loop through those orders and charge the card for them. And this function here, um, we've got two functions here. We've got first one is a function that tries to find a card. So this select card on file to charge. So it'll look to see the default card. It's got to pick which card to use. So if you've got um, two payment gateways running, it's got to decide which payment gateway to use. And then there's another action that charges that order. And card on file provides some events for rules. And one of those is um, a card on file is successfully charged. And the other one is um, the two, soft decline and hard decline. So I'm going to show you the bit that we need to do here, which is um, the... Uh, so this one here is our rule um, after successfully charging an order. And what we're going to do is update the status to charged, but actually I'm going to do some extra actions in here. And these are to do with the roll expire. Um. I also mentioned, I've just enabled it as well, this module called Roll Watchdog, <coughs> which in this type of site is a really useful uh, module that can track the history of roles on a user. So that's not something that's included by default in Drupal, and is um, uh, useful where you're dealing with managing roles, so you can see uh, when a role is being applied to a user and who applied it. Version I downloaded it.
So what I did with this one, I found that the best option was to um, set the expiry time for the roll um, rather than extend and um, usually give some grace period after it as well. Um, so we're going to add a roll um, action. So we've got the user. We know that. Uh, so I've got the order that we're dealing with. Uh, and we've got the owner. So that's the person that owns the order. Um, I haven't created a new role, but we give them administrator. And what we want to do is here. Load the um, Hmm. I've run out of this. Uh, in principle, um, oh, here we go. Uh, so what happens is that we load the um, recurring entity has the next due date of the order, um, so we can. Um, uh, get that due date and set the expiry date for the roll as the due date. Um, So this would be an example where we've just got the one part at the moment. So we're going to set the expiry date for one month. And uh, that's when it's going to expire. And I'll just show you as well. The 
But down here we've got um, the other uh, Dunning management rules uh, that set off here. So if there's a soft decline um, on a order, uh, we can go into notifying. So here the order status is updated to payment failed. If there was a soft decline, and if there's a hard decline, it puts it into a uh, payment rejected in the cancelled selection. So in commas, um, the order statuses are grouped into states. So there's five main states, um, cart, checkout, processing, completed, and cancelled. And then you can have substates in those. So most of these states that we're dealing with are in the um, processing um, or pending state has then substatuses. Um, normally these are just pending and processing, but we add in um, recurring, pending, card on file charged, um, and then card on file successfully charged. Um, so here example we've got notify customer about a soft decline. So um, after a failed attempt to charge an order, and if the um, here we can do a check the code that's coming back from the card and file charge. So we've got a set of standardised codes that come back from the card and the payment gateway modules. Um, is all the payment gateways have different codes for everything, but we uh, the integration by the payment gateway module is to standardise those into the um, card and file responses. And then we can create a message using the Drupal message module, which is used across all of the commerce for sending that message to the customer. Um, the message module has then options of setting how you actually send that message to the customer. So you can tell it to, um, if you know, know all of these about it, you can send an email to them, or maybe it's a message on the site, or maybe you can send them a text message if you've got uh, an interface set up for the message module. Um, and it also will then, here we use the rules schedule module to um, schedule subsequent tries of the card charging. And then in this example, it's going to set them up for 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. And after 15 days, terminate. So with the rules schedule module, we can create a rule and schedule it to happen at a set time. And um, what happens is if there's a successful one or, or a hard decline, it will cancel all the ones it's scheduled to try. So it's a, it's a really useful uh, feature as well. So that can also be used for things like the um, card on file um, expiry notification is that when the card on file is saved, you can just load the expiry date and tell it to save a scheduled rule to send a message to the user a month before the card expires. So there's some really great powerful things in, in rules that you can do. And then uh, the final one here is um, unscheduled uh, all further Dunning steps. So this is the one that talks about if the um, order has finally been changed to say it's paid in full, um, then we can cancel all of those attempts to try and recharge the card. And uh, just the same, uh, we've got a, we do add a store card um, page on the users where they can keep their stored card details. Um, so, is there any questions? Yeah. yeah. The, the, the thinking of the standard rule, so the cards are being held in the uh, American Express, London website. Yes, yeah, so the card details are all held on whichever payment gateway you're using. So they deal with all the PCI compliance details of the card details. So, would this uh, module work with uh, PayPal? Um, no, because PayPal, recurring in PayPal works in a different way. Um, and I need to look at how we can integrate that with PayPal. Because what happens with PayPal is you say, set up, you set the recurring up on PayPal's side and then you get a confirmation back from PayPal every month that the payment's being made. Whereas here, we're the ones that's actually triggering the, the payment as well. Um, the same uh, happens with um, uh, direct debits. Uh, so we have that in the UK and Germany has a similar thing. I'm not sure if um, 
if there is in Belgium and Netherlands where it's, it's directly out of the bank account. Um, so, but the, the same sort of thing applies where when you set that up with a payment gateway, you say charge this much every month, and then they then they tell you every month whether it was successful or not. So it's a different sort of uh, end. So here we create, and that's about that card and file process. So what happens is we re create that recurring order in commerce, and then card and file says right, load all those orders and charge the card. In that case, in PayPal, what we'd want to do something different is PayPal goes, right, load the order, and then have I received notification from PayPal that that payment has been received? This is a slightly different process, but we haven't built that out yet. What kind of data do you store on the credit cards? So the data that we store is a unique token provided by the payment gateway that's basically a UUID unique to that card um, and we store the expiry date and that's the only information we store about the card. So the last one? The expiry date. So if you want to have a, a subscription that goes like six months for free and Charging the client on the seventh month, there will be a monthly uh, setup. You, you have a first the initial price is zero, obviously. Yes, and mm -hmm. the initial period would be six months, yeah. and then you'd have your recurring period of every one month. Mm -hmm. So you can set the initial period. So the initial period could be as you could maybe have five days as the initial period, and then it's one month. So it's a five-day trial, and you can, those two are completely separate values. So they can be different scales as well. So you can one could be in days, one could be in months. Or, Um, just a last warning, um, rules uses um, IDs for roles when they're exported in features. So if you do export something like this in a feature on, your, on a dev site, to then, um, so you're using staging to then put it on your live site, if the rules aren't exactly the same on the two or they change in between, then you, you can end up with the wrong rule IDs. Um, I think there is a... a issue to uh, sort that out, but um, that's just a, a, a word of warning on those. So, you, of course, because they're, they're all rules, you can export them all in features. Um, for more information, all these modules, there is a webcast on the Commerce, Drupal Commerce website. We have a Commerce Module Tuesday webcasts, and uh, there are webcasts for all of these on there as well. So that's drupalcommerce.org website, and you can find all of the the um, information on there. And then finally to say, if anyone's coming along to um, Prague, um, we've got stuff there, and we've got um, uh, two sessions on that we're giving, uh, one by Damien about our new platform that we're launching for hosting, but also um, Boyan is giving a great session on Commerce Without Borders about doing e-commerce sites mainly in Europe and how you can do them across Europe, uh, across borders and how to deal with uh, international transactions and things like that. So that's going to be a really useful session. That's on the Thursday. Um, so there's some, uh, plenty of other great sessions there as well. And we also have a big stand in the exhibition. So if you want any questions, you want to ask me here today or if you're there, there's plenty of people there to ask as well. That's, that's it. Thanks very much for coming.